Hey there, friends. My name is Jeff Fritz, and I'm here to talk to you today about .NET Aspire. This is a series of videos that are going to teach you all about .NET Aspire, including not just what it is, but how to get it installed and running on your workstation, and how you can use it to adapt and make an application system work with .NET Aspire, and finally, how to deploy an application that's been built and managed with .NET Aspire. There's lots of great content in this video series for you. I want to make sure you check out all the learning resources that are available at aka.ms slash let's learn slash dot net slash aspire. All of the slides, the markdown, the content, the samples for this video and the series that goes with it are all available on our GitHub. Check it out at github.com slash dot net dash presentations slash let's learn dash .NET dash Aspire. So if you've been working with .NET for some time, you know that .NET is your application system that you can use to build anything. It's a united platform that gives you all kinds of capabilities to build for the cloud, for the web, for desktop, mobile, gaming, IoT devices, and even AI capabilities. We've got editors available for you like Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code as well as CLI tools that allow you to work with any text editor that you'd like to write and build code that works with .NET. It'll work, run on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and there's a fantastic uh, series of features available in an ecosystem, including packages running on NuGet, GitHub capabilities, as well as integrations, tools, and uh, all kinds of libraries available from various vendors. There's a whole ecosystem that you can use to build whatever application that you dream of. But when you're building an application system, we know that every app needs things like observability, resiliency, scalability, and manageability so that you can work with and grow your application. Your application needs to be observable. You want to know those logs and metrics that are happening inside of your application so that if there is an error, if a customer has a problem, you can go through, diagnose, and fix it. You want resiliency so that if there's an issue with your application connecting to the various other dependent services that it has, whether it's a database or APIs, you want to be able to reconnect, retry, and make sure that if it doesn't work, it handles that appropriately and is able to respond correctly to your customers. You want scalability so that when your application does get that rush of customers, the visitors to your application that are using that application and, and they want a great experience with it, you want your application to be able to scale from one server to many servers as quickly as it needs to to handle all of your customers. And finally, we want manageability so that our application can be managed easily when it comes time to grow from a small application to a larger application. We know with .NET 8, there are all kinds of features that have been built and included in the base framework to help with some of these four tenets that we want to address. For observability, we have built-in metric capabilities with dimensions so that you can see the performance numbers, how long various things took when you interact with them inside your application system. Dependency injection integration with metrics. You don't even need to configure these things because dependency injection will set up those metric management for you. You're going to get better logging support using tools like OpenTelemetry. You can enrich the interactions that you have with other services very easily with the tools in .NET 8. You can even redact your logs so that private and personal information doesn't end up leaking into your logs and potentially being exposed. There's testing with fakes for logging and metrics. We've also got resiliency features that are available, including poly-based resiliency packages and SignalR-based stateful reconnects of your application. And your application can scale much, much better than it has in the past because we have things enabled like ahead-of-time compilation so you can compile and make your application run in a smaller memory space, in a smaller space on disk, 
so that you can run more instances of your application on the same server side. We've improved performance so that you don't need as much processor or memory to run the same application. We'll even run on chiseled Ubuntu container images so that you end up with a very small image that doesn't have all those extra things running around in the operating system that you don't need. And finally, for manageability, we added things like configuring auto-rotation of your web server certificates, all built into Kestrel for you. But even with this set up, it, it's, it's still not easy. Setting up and managing and connecting all those pieces is, is complex. If you haven't done this before, it can take a little bit of time to, to make sure that you have everything working together. That means that when the next developer joins the project team, they've got a difficult getting started experience. We want to make sure that, that that developer that joins the team can get started and be productive as quickly as possible. That helps the whole team have a higher velocity and have a better return and delivery on the product that they're working toward. The choices that are available are kind of crazy. There's, there's a lot of different pieces that you can stitch together here to build your application system and, and how do we know that they're all going to work together properly? which means that we want to also make sure we have a good paved path. What's, what's a path that folks have gone through in the past that has proven to be a reliable and assured system practice that we can use in the future to build our application system? While answering all of those questions and fulfilling those four tenets are what .NET Aspire is designed to do. It's a cloud-ready stack for building observable, production-ready, distributed applications. What's that mean? Listen, that means that we're going to help you whether your application is as small as a little website connecting to a database, or it's as big as a series of websites and APIs that connect through a service bus to a series of databases and data stores that have offline capabilities that are interacted with and open AI interactions that are going to load and analyze and report things back to your customers. We've got all of those capabilities available for you to scale and grow into as you build your application. Who is it for? For any developer that is looking to build an application system. Not just .NET developers, any developer that's looking to build an application system. So should you use it? I hope by the end of this video series, your answer to that question is an emphatic yes, because we think that putting these pieces together to build your application system is going to make your development process easier, more friendly, and more productive for you to interact with your other team members to grow and build your application system. Now, when we think about a storefront application, something like this that you might have built in the past, it's, it can go from being as simple as that website, maybe it's a Blazor application, connecting into a, a simple data source. And it could be as, as easy as a SQLite database on disk that just has a list of the various products that are available inside your store. As that grows and you swap out that SQLite database on disk, you're, you may be swapping in a back-end API that interacts with identity, catalog, the orders that you're processing, the payment processing, and then finally saves data into Postgres. You can do all of that with .NET Aspire as it grows and helps you manage your application system. And finally, when your application gets to be as complex and as enterprise-grade as something like this, where we've got mobile applications, web applications that are out there that connect to a back end for front end for the mobile, and the web app that's running with Blazor on a server in the cloud, and you have all these APIs that they connect into and interact with using Postgres databases and maybe a Redis cache, a third party service like a payment processor, and you want to communicate back and forth with them using something like RabbitMQ. We can do all of those things and even work with admin services here that have webhooks and other web services and at the same time have all the observability capabilities so we get logging 
and metrics being reported back from our system. So we can even dial in OpenAI at the end there to help introduce some cool new features for your customers so that they can get more out of your application. .NET Aspire is a complete series of tools that you can use to build your application system right now. It doesn't matter if it's as complex as this or it's as simple as that little website with, a, with an on-disk data store. .NET Aspire is going to help you out. I hope you stick around for the rest of the videos in this series. I've got a handful of them that are going to show you coming up next how to set up your developer workstation so you can work with .NET Aspire. We're going to look at how to take an existing application that was built with .NET and Aspireify it and allow it to work with .NET Aspire. And then finally, we're going to take a look at how we can take that application and deploy it and get it running out on a cloud service. My name is Jeff Fritz. Thanks so much for watching.